let's demystify pointers because they can be kind of scary. Let's say we declare a very simple integer variable called val, just like we do here. When we do that, what really happens is we can think of a bucket being created. And this bucket has an address, a memory address. And we can even look at this memory address. Uh, let's do that right now. We can simply use percent %p and percent %i for the value. And if you, we use an ampersand in front of the variable name, we get the memory address instead of the value. But we also want the value. Let's run it. And sure enough, here we have our bucket address, and there's nothing in it. So now what happens if we assign a value? Let's say we assign 5. We can think of something now being put into this bucket. So let's do that too. We put something in our integer bucket. And we run it, and sure enough, got our address, and there's something in it, 5. OK. So we already have one piece of the puzzle, the fact that we can actually get to the memory address of this primitive variable. So now let's see how pointers enter the picture. We can declare a pointer simply by using an asterisk. So let's say we say integer asterisk and we call it PTR. So now we're saying we have a new variable that cannot hold an integer but it can hold the address of a variable that can hold an integer. So all that happens is we're really creating another bucket. And that bucket in turn also has a memory address. And we can look at that too. So let's copy this line. And we cannot use i here because the value that's stored in this second bucket is not an integer, but it's another address. So all we have to do now is say ampersand ptr and ptr. Let's run it. And we see we got the address of our second bucket, and there's nothing in it at the moment. OK. So what happens now if we assign something to it? So let's go here and say ampersand val, just like we did right here. Well, let's run it. And we see, sure enough, there's something in it. And it's exactly the, the same address of our left bucket. So. What really happened now is we put something in the right bucket. And this is the same address as our left bucket. So how can we get back to the value of the left bucket from our pointer? We can do that simply by using a technique called deep dereferencing. So we got our pointer and now we use the asterisk to dereference it. And because now we get an actual integer value back again, we have to change this to i. And when we run it, sure enough, we get 5. So pointers are not that hard. Just think of them as buckets and keep in mind that simple variables that we create are really a bucket that can hold a value. And pointers are also just buckets that can hold values. But the only special thing is that the values that they hold 
our other memory addresses. And that's all there is to 